Hello everyone, I hope you're all having an excellent Sunday because we have a really an incredible game between two engines. It's a game between Stockfish and Komodo uh, from the TCEC, that's the top chess engine competition. And it is uh, not often I will show a game between two engines. So, okay, I did enjoy that uh, Alpha Zero versus Stockfish match and also uh, I will show a Leela Chess Zero game now and then uh, just to you know, see what uh, progress Leela has made. Uh, but it is very rare that I will show a game between two engines, mostly because uh, those games are really boring boring and uh, last like a hundred uh, or two hundred or, or more moves uh, and it's um, not not something we can use to to improve or uh, or to, to even enjoy but uh, this game it features a very old opening one of the oldest openings uh, in chess and it's very interesting uh, how both Stockfish and Komodo, uh, Komodo uh, treat this opening uh, it comes as a suggestion uh, from a user on Twitter named Loriano there you can see uh, uh, below this uh, uh, Spanish version of Chess 24's tweet. He tagged me there, and uh, I'm really thankful for that. As uh, you know, as some people don't allow tagging on Twitter. I I really don't mind because uh, often people will tag me and uh, you know uh, bring my attention to a very nice game such as this one. So uh, thank you uh, to Chess 24 and also Mr. Loriano or Mrs. Uh, as I don't know uh, for bringing this game to my attention. Now, without further ado, let's check out this very nice game. Uh, Stockfish rated some uh, 3519, plays e4. Uh, we have e5 by Komodo, uh, knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to c4, and knight to f6. So the two knights defenses on the board. Uh, if you br uh, you know grab any book on chess openings, most likely if it's about open games, you will have the two knights defense uh, in, in there. Uh, knight to g5, this is the knight attack, one of the oldest and the trickiest attacks uh, in chess altogether. Uh, going immediately after this f7 pawn, and it's not uh, all that clear how to... Uh, how to defend the f7 pawn. If uh, if you're explaining how to play chess to a beginner, this is actually one of the best uh, attacks you can show them to really understand how to how to attack and defend in chess. Uh, well, there are several ways you can uh, go about this. You can go for some bishop to c5, like the Traxler counterattack, uh, but we're not going to go into that now. d5 is the main move. Uh, and it's a move that uh, has been played for over a hundred years. Uh, e captures on d5 and now knight to a5. Uh, if you accept this pawn, uh, knight captures on d5, then you have to go into knight captures on f7. This is the fried liver attack. Uh, I'm sure uh, you've, you've seen it uh, at least somewhere. After king captures, queen to f3 check. Now you have a double attack against the knight on d5. Also, the knight cannot block because it's pinned from the bishop. Uh, you would have to go with, uh, with king to e6 to block your... Uh, uh, to, to help out with the defense of the knight uh, or move the king back and then just uh, suffer a loss of a pawn or if you're playing against a really bad opponent uh, maybe even king to g8 will be played and then you can deliver a swift checkmate with the bishop after bishop to e6 this will be checkmate as the king has nowhere to go uh, but as this is a game uh, between two very strong engines uh, knight to a5 of course this is nothing new a move that has been played uh, plenty of times by both beginners and grandmasters uh, we have bishop to b5 with check, c6, pawn captures on c6, pawn captures on c6, and now bishop to e2. Uh, we have uh, h6, and now comes uh, knight to h3. Uh, it's interesting, knight to f3 can also be played, then you go into this uh, e4 variation, but also very playable. Uh, but knight to h3 is actually a move uh, Steinitz prepared for his uh, match against uh, Mikhail Chigorin. And it's very interesting, uh, this is a position uh, that was on the board uh, more than once uh, in uh, Chigorin versus Steinitz match in 1892, so over 125 years ago. And this is why chess is uh, very interesting and I believe it will always be interesting. Uh, here... Uh, Steinitz, uh, Chigorin played bishop to c5 on uh, numerous occasions against, uh, Chigorin played this against Steinitz on numerous occasions in their match, uh, and some of the games he won, some of the games he lost, but uh, here uh, Komodo goes for g5, but it's very interesting, uh, this is quite a mess on the board, and if uh, today's engines that rate themselves some uh, 3500 uh, have this exact same position uh, that uh, after move 10, uh, that uh, Steinitz and Chigurin had on the board 125 years ago, then really those old masters really knew what they were doing. Uh, but okay, g5, uh, this is nothing new, has been played plenty of times by grandmasters. 
capturing on h3 doesn't really give you anything. You just uh, waste your bishop pair, and after white uh, develops uh, his forces, he will have a bishop pair, and it's a very much open game, and the white will have an advantage. Something Steinitz also knew uh, some 125 years ago, and uh, that's why Chigorin never actually captured this knight with the bishop. Uh, so, uh, g5 here by Komodo, a knight to c3, Stockfish continues to develop, uh, and here is a new move, a move that was never played, at least in human chess. Here, bishop to g7 was played, bishop to e6 was played, rook to b8 was played, uh, a lot of developing moves by human players, but here, uh, Komodo plays a move that was not played here ever, it's knight to b7. So, an, a move with the knight back, uh, and we'll, we'll see what's his, what his idea is. Uh, knight to g1, uh, preparing to remaneuver the knight, uh, not allowing g4 to come with tempo. Uh, bishop to c5, now developing uh, a bishop, and now comes king to f1. Uh, if you start uh, with the d3 immediately, then you have to go into this queen to b6. Comes with an attack against uh, the f2 pawn, this will come with check. So now you'll have to move the king, and after a bishop captures, knight to a4, you will attack the queen. Queen to a5, captures, captures, and... Uh, well, obviously it's not all that great as uh, it was not played. Uh, but okay, bishop to c5, uh, king to f1, and now comes the bishop to e6. I will just try and make sense of most of the moves, as I really don't have the software or the hardware to uh, to really go into why uh, a 3500 engine played what he did. Uh, but okay, uh, d3, uh, we have uh, queen to c7, preparing to castle queenside. Uh, rook to b1, and now castles queenside. And now comes queen to e1. Uh, most likely queen to e1, because if uh, b4 immediately attacking the bishop, uh, the bishop will come to d4, attacking the undefended knight, and then you will have to play queen to e1 either way. So uh, perhaps better queen to e1 immediately, and then you'll see if you really want to play b4. Uh, bishop to b6, not allowing this b4 to come with tempo, and now b4. Uh, knight to d6, uh, we have knight to a4, uh, going for that very strong bishop on b6, uh, and rook h to e8, uh, centralizing uh, the rooks, uh, bishop to b2, uh, attacking the e5 pawn, and now comes the bishop to f5, uh, now the rook is guarding the e5 pawn. Uh, rook to d1, uh, we have bishop to d4, attacking the bishop, and now c3, forcing the bishop back, and only now will knight capture it. Knight captures on b6, we have a captures on b6, and now c4. So, uh, white definitely has some nice expansion on the queen side, a4 is coming at some point, uh, but the one thing you can notice is that all of black's pieces are, well, perhaps not ideally placed, but they are very much developed and they are occupying some very nice squares. Uh, while uh, Stockfish's pieces are really stuck uh, on, the, on the bottom rank, uh, the light square bishop isn't really doing all that much, and okay, the dark square bishop is a pretty decent piece, but still, it's not at all clear what, what he's doing. Uh, but okay, uh, rook to d7, preparing either to double up on the e file or the d file, and now comes queen to c3. Uh, now, uh, attacking the e5 pawn, if rook is doubled here, then of course the pawn can be captured, and also not allowing e4, as now the knight on f6 would be hanging. So it's very interesting if you put this position on, uh, on for, for example, your engine or something, uh, moves like uh, rook d to e7 will be a suggestion, bishop to g4 will be a suggestion offering a trade of bishops, uh, but the move uh, Komodo played in this position is basically the reason uh, why we're showing this game and how uh, everything uh, you know blows up in this position. Uh, the move Komodo played, and if you want, you're more than welcome to pause the video here and, you know, try and figure out what he played and what he played, you know, those are two different things. Anyone can guess what he played, but it's a different story why he played it. Uh, but okay, if you have paused the video and uh, found the move, congratulations, you really are a very creative uh, player on a Sunday. Uh, and for those of you who, who want to enjoy the show, uh, the move played was e4. And it seems like this was impossible because the knight on f6 was undefended. Uh, but... Uh, it seems like it is. Uh, so what's the idea here? To find out it's best to capture the knight and ask questions later. So okay, queen captures on f6. This was played in the game. Uh, and now comes e captures on d3. So okay, now we see that uh, for the price of this very nice knight on f6, uh, black already has a pass pawn on d3. So white has to do something as uh, his bishop on e2 is under attack. Uh, we have bishop to f3, but we also have to figure out what happens if bishop captures on, uh, on d3. 
Uh, then, of course, the bishop captures, rook captures, and now comes knight captures on c4. Uh, opening up a discovered attack from this rook uh, to the rook on d3. And also notice that this rook is covering the entire e file. So if this rook would move uh, anywhere from the d file, uh, moves like knight to d2 would be checkmate. Uh, so after rook captures, queen captures, uh, you would have something like... Uh, g3 because you have to prevent uh, either queen to d1 will be checkmate or knight to d2 will be checkmate uh, but now after g3 queen to d5 will win you the game uh, as there is no way to protect the rook knight f3 loses to g4 simply attacking the knight uh, and if you try f3 you're getting checkmated after queen d1 king moves uh, knight checks king moves and now queen to f1 uh, will be checkmate as the knight is covering both the g2 and the g4 uh, on the other hand, uh, instead, after this knight captures on c4, if you don't trade the rooks, if you try something like queen to f5 to simply pin the rook and attack it, uh, then knight captures on b2 is more than enough. Rook captures, queen captures, queen captures, king captures, and here uh, the material on the board would be equal, but with uh, white king so inactive and all of white's pieces undeveloped, black would be uh, very quick to, to grab uh, uh, all of the pawns on the queen side and win the game easily. Uh, so, after this e captures on d3, you cannot capture on d3, so bishop to f3 was played. Uh, which is very interesting because of the next few moves. Uh, black played rook to e7, attacking the queen. We have queen to d4, uh, and now comes knight to e8, attacking the queen, as this opened up a discovered attack from the rook to the queen. Queen to c3, and now g4, trapping the bishop. So if we look at it this way, the sacrifice of the knight on f6 wasn't really a sacrifice if black knew that he would win the bishop back. Uh, which uh, brings us to the next question, and we have to go back a few moves. If uh, white is obviously a very strong engine, rated 3500, why would he play bishop to f3 instead of bishop to h5? So perhaps if the bishop is on h5, uh, black will not be able to trap it after this sequence with the move g4. Uh, but uh, if we check out the same idea, rook to e6, uh, queen to here, now comes knight back, queen has to move, now comes knight to f6. Uh, it comes uh, with an attack on the bishop, the bishop is undefended, you have to move it, and then g4 traps it again. Uh, or you could argue that g4 perhaps could save you the bishop here, but then you get bishop to e4, uh, attacking the rook. Uh, and after f3, knight captures on h5, pawn captures, and now after g4, uh, you cannot capture because you lose the rook here, and if you capture the bishop here, then queen to f4, uh, and you're getting checkmated. If king e1, then rook captures here, and knight e2, rook captures on e2 will be checkmate. Uh, and if you don't go uh, to e1 with the king, if you go to g2, then you get queen captures on e4, uh, king g3, queen captures on h1, white is falling apart here. Uh, and also a very interesting idea after bishop to h5, uh, perhaps white didn't go for this uh, because after rook e6 attacking the queen, queen d4, now black doesn't even have to go back with the knight like we've just shown. He can even go knight to e4. Uh, and then uh, black can draw the game by force after the queen moves. Let's say with check, you attack the queen, queen goes back. Uh, now comes queen to f4. You threaten checkmate on f2 uh, after white defends it. Now you get knight captures on f2. King captures and queen e3 check. King moves, queen f4 check, king moves, queen e3 check, king moves, and so on and so on. A draw by a threefold repetition. Uh, so uh, that's why most likely Stockfish played bishop to f3. Not, uh, not because uh, he was... Uh, <laughs> well... Uh, for the lack of a better word, afraid to play bishop to h5 and trying to save the piece, but because he wants to win this game. So apparently bishop to f3 uh, is Stockfish's attempt to win the game. So let's see uh, how, how it continued. Uh, rook to e6, we already saw this. Queen to d4, knight attacks, uh, well, rook attacks queen as it's a discovered attack. Queen moves and now g4. Uh, attacking the bishop, h3, and now black wins the piece back. Knight captures on f3, and now comes the bishop to e4. Uh, we have a bishop to c1 and now c5. Uh, capturing the knight on f3 isn't uh, great uh, right now, but it is something white will have to watch out for. First, the black improves the position of his queen. Uh, we have c5, uh, pawn captures on c5 and queen captures on c5. And now uh, b5 is a terrible threat as white will not be able to capture the queen and c3 is unguarded. Uh, but also you cannot allow bishop captures on f3. For example, if you play a4 and prevent this, 
uh, then bishop captures on f3 will win you the game after g captures and queen to f5. Uh, the rook is controlling the entire e file, rook can come to g6 and also control the g file. Uh, the queen will capture on, uh, on f3, attacking the rook on d1, attacking the rook on h1. So whatever white plays, let's say g2, then rook to g6 pushes the king back. Uh, queen captures, threatens checkmate on g2, rook blocks, captures, and after a couple of checks, you will simply play rook to e7, bring the other rook over to e2, and win the game easily. Uh, so, after queen to c5, uh, there's no time to prevent the pawn push with a4, you have to prevent this knight from being captured. So, knight to e1, uh, but now comes b5. You cannot capture, as we already mentioned, the queen is unguarded. Uh, bishop to e3 attacking the queen and now queen captures on c4. Uh, white cannot allow captures captures as the two connected pass pawns would be too much for white to handle. So after queen captures on c4, uh, queen to d2 not allowing the trade. Queen to d5 uh, pressuring the g2 pawn uh, and now comes queen to c3. Rook to c6 forcing the queen back. Queen to b3 and now comes knight to c7. Uh, defending the queen on d5 uh, and again you don't want to allow this queen trade so white moves back queen to b2 uh, and now comes queen to c4 an excellent square for black's queen because white will never be able to to trade queens here on this square uh, king to g1 as the threat uh, before this was uh, uh, this check with the d2 uh, so king to g1 and now knight to d5 uh, we have king to h2 and now knight captures on e3 uh, f captures on e3 and now f5. Uh, and okay, rook to g1. Uh, white did manage to activate his other rook. Uh, but now comes queen to a4, attacking the rook on, a on d1. Uh, queen to a1, defending the rook, and now king to b7, improving the position of the king. We have a3, and now comes rook to g6. Uh, now black wants to double up on the g file. Uh, queen to c1, and now comes rook to d8. Uh, a waiting move uh, that basically puts white in Tsuk uh, white queen can't really move as she has to keep an eye uh, on the a3 pawn uh, and also the rook on d1. You can't really move uh, uh, the knight and the rook as the, the, the black bishop and rook are attacking the g2 pawn. Uh, there's really no point in moving any of the pawns. You can't, no point in really moving the king whatsoever. Uh, so it's it's a very hard position for white and it's very interesting if you try something like rook to d2 which seems like uh, a useful move, you know, adding another defender here. Uh, then white has this very, uh, black has this very annoying queen to c4 that will force a queen trade. Uh, the queen is under attack and also undefended. You have to play knight to f3 to defend the queen. And now after bishop captures, pawn captures, now you can double up on the g file. And here after rook to f1, avoiding the trade. Uh, f4, uh, now white is out of any useful moves. You will have to capture, capture, and then doesn't matter. You will give up the, the f4 pawn, but the double the passed pawns will be enough to win this. Uh, so, after rook to d8, this very nice waiting move by Komodo, uh, queen to d2 was played, giving up the a3 pawn, uh, uh, so Komodo snatches it, and now comes rook to f1. Uh, rook to c6, uh, preparing uh, some very nasty ideas. Uh, we have uh, queen to f2, and now comes rook to g8. Uh, g3, and now rook back to c c8, as the g file is now closed. Uh, we have h4, and now comes rook to c2. Finally, uh, Komodo finds a way how to infiltrate. Uh, you have to capture it as your queen and king are, uh, well, uh, on the same uh, file as this rook. Knight captures on c2 was played. Rook captures on c2, attacking the queen and king. We have rook to d2 blocking. Uh, and here, Komodo played queen to c3, and it was in this position that Stockfish resigned the game. Not just any stockfish, uh, a 3519 rated stockfish. Uh, why did uh, the stockfish resign? Well, if captures rook, then pawn captures. The threat is pawn to c, pawn to c1, bring another queen into the game. And if you block this, uh, then b4, you will, of course, push your other pawn to victory. Uh, queen to f1, uh, with the threat of queen to b5 check, doesn't really do anything, as after the king moves, uh, there are no more checks. The queen is covering uh, a5, uh, c5, and there are no other other squares for you to check, and also e5. So yeah, uh, oh, and of course, if you don't do anything uh, after this uh, queen to c3, if you just move the rook, rook f to d1, then b4, simply continue pushing your passed pawn, and you will win this game easily. So, like I said, it's not very often that I will show a game between two engines, especially such high-rated engines as 
you know, it will be very hard to analyze such a game. Uh, but uh, I feel that this game uh, between Stockfish and Komodo from the TCEC, uh, which really showed us uh, how the old masters played it, uh, for example, that uh, <laughs> Steinitz versus Chigorin game, uh, where after knight to h3, the move Steinitz invented, uh, this knight to b7 was played. So perhaps if you if you play, you know, this uh, uh, against the two knights defense and you enter this position, uh, you'll know that it's okay to go knight to b7 and that it can be a very useful move. So yeah, uh, that's basically it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Stefan Green, Tony Kotsian Turk, uh, Danny McCullough, uh, Christian Boomer, and uh, Sian McLuglin uh, for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, uh, and I will see you soon, hopefully, with some more interesting content. The Fisher series is over, um, but we will start a vote on the next series very soon. So thank you all, and uh, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of the Sunday.